All right, everybody. Tonight, we will have K-Ron Bradley. We got it all figured out. He will be on with us tonight, Shocker fans. If you're an Aftershocks fan with the TBT tournament coming up in July and August, we'll talk a lot about that and the players he'll have. Will he get Ron Baker? We don't know. Um, before he gets on, let's get to another big win last night for Wichita State against Tulane. They beat Tulane 78-70 to 70 last night, and... They still are in first place against Houston. They are 10 and two, Houston 11 and three, or 13 and three, sorry. Wichita State has to win Saturday to get that AAC first place bid in the tournament and help them out for at-large chances most likely. So let's hope Wichita State takes down South Florida on Saturday. Um, as of now, Lenardi, we call him another name, but we can't say it on here as Wichita State as a 12 seed as the automatic qualifier because they're first place. Would he have them in if they weren't? Probably not. Jerry Palm, who has disrespected Wichita State in all the years I can remember, has respected Wichita State this year. He has them as a 10 seed. If they win Saturday, he might possibly move them up as a nine seed. So it's a matter of till, will we get a bid? Will we not? Do we have to win at least one or two games in the tournament? I believe if we win one game in the first round, we'll be good to go. and We'll get that seed. I believe you will, too. And it's just kind of hard to believe that a team who is first in their conference gets a 12 seed. Um, this is not, you know, the Missouri Valley. No disrespect to the Valley. But if you line up all the conferences, I guarantee you that Missouri Valley is the worst conference. ACC is having a down year. Big Ten, I believe, is having a down year to an extent. And, you know, you could say the same for the Pac-12, you know, kind of. Um, but my whole thing is, is you cannot disrespect a outright winner of a conference that's not the Missouri Valley and give them a 12 seed. Yeah. Uh, the worst that they should be at you know, for any conference is an eight. Okay. I mean, that's just my opinion, but there is no way a conference winner in, you know, let's say you have your power five conferences. This is what a power six, or are they part of the power five? The AAC right now is what you say a power six. Okay. So, it, yeah, I mean, I really say that much, but yeah. Right. But, I mean, the, the bottom line is, is after the Power Five, it goes the AAC. I mean, let's just get real. Yeah. And uh, to, you know, have them be over 10 is ridiculous. Yeah. It's not like some Cinderella team. Exactly. So. All right. Now that we got that figured out, we are now joined by K. Ron Bradley tonight. Um, Tuesday night was technical difficulties, misunderstanding, but we got that all figured out now. So we're back tonight. K. Ron, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks so much for having me, guys. Thank you. Yes. I want to start with Aftershocks. Last year, COVID just ruined everything in the summer. You know, you guys were planning to go play, I think, in Tennessee, and then you guys decided to opt it out because I didn't want nobody getting health issues or anything like that. Um, this year, I believe you guys have most of your guys back, correct? Yes, we do, actually. Uh, everybody seems to be in good health, um, and that's the most important thing. Uh, we try to make sure we're keeping in contact with guys throughout the year, just trying to keep it up, you know, seeing how they're feeling and just giving an idea of who's really committed. But, uh, yeah, absolutely, we have everybody here. So Now, are you guys – because I don't think Ron Baker's playing overseas right now, <laughs> according to his Twitter account. Are you guys pushing to get him on this team? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, he's someone that obviously, um, you know, he can help our, our team a, a ton, you know, and just with his ability, you know, at that at that guard position, being someone that can guard and that can score. We're definitely, uh, you know, I, I talk to him um, quite often throughout the year, and I've been definitely pushing for him to join for sure. Yeah. Now, tell me about um, – because – I know after you graduated, you went off, you did your own stuff. And then when I forgot who the CEO was of TBT, but when he started this thing, did he contact a lot of you guys or did you guys just get together and say, Hey, let's do this. I'll be the head coach. I want you guys to play for me. How did you guys get this team together? Um, 
I, I started off uh, with me. I reached out to him actually to help um, get it, get it going. And um, it was an, it was something that me and a couple of guys were kind of talking about, you know, and um, we just decided to go with it full go, you know, and commit to it. We obviously had known about the TBT for some time and the reputation that it has. And, um, you know, we decided, Hey, this is a no brainer for us. Let's try to make it happen. Yeah. Adam, do you have a question? Yeah. I just, you know, going back to Ron Baker and, you know, some of his positives that he brings to a team. Yeah. Um, you see him going back to the NBA at all? Yeah, I, I don't – I definitely see him um, going back to the NBA. Uh, I think it's it's kind of one of those things where, you know, for me, the road to the NBA, not everybody has that same story of, you know, getting drafted and, you know, being a first-round draft pick and being in the NBA on the same team, you know, that, that same story. Um, and obviously with him, he's already proven himself in the NBA that he can play in the NBA. And I think, you know, for him, it's just finding the right spot, you know, finding that team uh, that he can contribute. And, and I think he can land absolutely back into the NBA. What do you think is um, kind of the skill you need or you look for in uh, asking guys to come on the team? Um, is it just, you know, can they shoot or are you looking at defense as well? You know? Yeah, uh, yeah we're, we're definitely looking at, you know, uh, an entire complete game. You know, obviously with TBT, uh, there's uh, a, a formula, I would say, of a team that's been consistently winning. And when you look at teams like an overseas elite or – the Golden Eagles of Marquette, they've kind of set that blueprint of, you know, having guys, uh, you know, four men and five men that can guard multiple positions and that can stretch the defense. Um, and so what, what I look for is obviously, you know, we try to break it down every position, you know, to try to get a guy obviously that can score, but also that can defend. And that's, that's going to bring that high energy, you know, because, you know, obviously teams, um, you just can't be made up of a bunch of scores. You got to have other guys that are contributing other ways. You know, that's what makes championship teams. And, um, you know, we look for everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool you guys, you know, are doing this league because a lot of guys go overseas and they're really good basketball players that for some reason just can't, you know, find their niche in the NBA but are still fun to watch. I'm an Arizona fan, so I enjoy watching Kyle Fogg and some other guys, but they all are overseas. Yeah. So Absolutely. It's pretty, absolutely. It's pretty cool. You can bring them here and keep them in the United States if you can. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, to go off of that point, it, it really gives them a, a great platform, you know, to showcase what they can do. I mean, some of these guys have gotten NBA contracts from playing in the TBT. You know, so this is something that and – it, and it's professional basketball. It's high-level basketball. Um, you know, obviously when they first started this, they – I don't know if they anticipated it growing to the level that it has. And I think their motto at first was, hey, this is kind of for your everyday Joe that wants to try to have his chance at a million dollars. And now mm -hmm. it's just grown to where if you don't have professional guys that are really legit good professionals, you have no chance of winning in this league. And I, I do believe that NBA GMs have taken notice. Um, just the entire basketball world. I mean, you've seen LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, guys like that talk about it. And so it's a place for players if they're really trying to get that recognition in the summertime when there's not a lot of basketball being played at that level. He, last question. Uh, do you think that this league will then ask, you know, the whole one and done rule in college, I think is kind of bogus. So do you think that this league could then take some high school players and help trans, you know, form them into NBA players if they don't want to go to college? Yeah, I think so. I think, uh, you know, that's something that they can look into, uh, you know, later down the line. Obviously, we're seeing things with the G League. They're looking to take high school players. Um, and, and so that, you know, that whole dynamic of players wanting to come out you know, um, out of high school has changed a lot. 
And, you know, they want to go into a situation where they can make some money, but also not have to go through that college system, you mm -hmm. know? And so I definitely can see a league like this being a, you know, kind of like a, a system for those types of players as well. Absolutely. Exactly. Now I want to get to your playing days. Again, Marquette, you played with Dean Wade, got to the final four and then KU happened to knock you guys off. And then you transferred to Wichita State in 04, 05. And then, of course, senior year, Sweet 16, the magical run against Tennessee. And then you guys ended up falling to George Mason. But yeah. what was it like playing with Dean Wade in college and then knowing what he did after that, going on to the NBA, becoming a Hall of Famer? And then you go to Wichita State and you play with a, another bunch of great guys. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, First, you know, with D. Wade, I mean, I can't describe to you – how great he really is you know like you everyone obviously knows that he's had a hall of fame career and he's you know won you know multiple championships and all-star games gold medal you you name it a list of accolades but to be it to have to to guard him you know every day in practice is just I can't put it into words how difficult it is you know there's certain levels of basketball that you know, I didn't, I didn't think it was possible because me coming out of high school in Houston, you know, I was considered one of the top kids coming out of Houston. And so in my mind, I'm like, hey, uh, you know, I'm, it's going to carry over. And I had no idea, you know, seeing guys like that for the first time, like I was just in shock. You know, I didn't know players like that existed. And it was a great experience, obviously, watching him and learning from him. You know, it made me better as well. Um, and, and just to – get a chance to play with somebody like that, it's, it's always great. And then going into Wichita State, what ultimately, what the reason why I decided to, to transfer was when I came on my visit, I saw the players and, and I, I got a chance to play pickup with these guys. I mean, these guys we had at the time, it was Paul Miller, uh, Randy Burns was still here, Jamar Howard, uh, Rob Campman, guys like that. And I had to step my level of play up. Now, at the time, Wichita State is considered maybe a, a mid-major at this time, you know. But to me, that Wichita State team was better than the Marquette team that I was leaving. And so I knew how good we were going to be. And then plus, once I got there, I saw how, you know, the, the fan support in Wichita is just is unbelievable. And that was obviously the, the main reason why I went. But both experiences were great. I got a chance to play with great players in both, so. And I understand that 2006 when you guys got to the tournament and then you guys beat Seton Hall in that first round. From what I understood, you guys were rooting for Tennessee because that Greg Marshall and Winthrop team, I heard that you guys were scared to play because of the way they played and their athletic ability. And you guys were happy when Tennessee won that game. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, we, we were happy just for the simple fact that for even for us during that time, I remember how tough the Valley was. I mean, you had teams like Southern Illinois, um, Creighton, and these were dogfights in the Valley. So we felt like, and, and, and defensively, you know, it was always a challenge. I mean, these were dogfight games. So we felt like when we played a team from the SEC or one of those teams, you know, we weren't afraid of those teams. And we knew of, of Coach Marshall's teams and, and how he got after it and how they were defensively. And so, yeah, absolutely. Adam, do you have a question? Uh, I was just wondering, uh, what was it like playing for Mark Turgeon? Uh, do you think he'll last in Maryland? Um, it's a good question. I, me, I, I really um, enjoy playing for Coach Turgeon. Um, Coach Turgeon, and, and I'm not sure if you guys know the story of, you know, I was recruited by him out of high school. And so I had developed a relationship with him prior uh, to that and so um, and, and they were the school that was you know at most of my games when I was in high school so I had already developed a great relationship and you know I enjoy playing for uh, for coach uh, Turgeon and you know he was just one of those guys that he demanded a lot out of you but you know I, I enjoyed you know he was he was a player's coach and obviously him having experience of playing at KU under coach Larry Brown you know he knew the game of basketball and so that was another plus as well. He taught me a lot about the game. So, and I think he'll last at Maryland. I mean, I don't know how they're doing this year. Uh, I haven't got a chance to keep up with them, but I think, I think he'll be okay there. Yeah. Oh, wow. 
Now, being, what was the, oh, go ahead, Adam. No, I was just wondering what was the life like for Tom Cree? Yeah, uh, yeah, totally different experience, you know, night and day coaches. But I can say this, though, and, and I still keep in contact with Coach Green. I, we actually have a, a, a group chat um, with the Final Four team that I was on with D. Wade and Steve Novak. And Coach Green was the one actually that started and put the, the group chat together. And I'm still in constant contact with him. But one of the things that I learned, I believe he's the reason that I'm coaching now. Um, because he taught me so much about the game and preparation of the game and what it means, you know, as far as practicing and the details and the work that goes into it, even outside of on the court stuff, you know. Um, so he's the reason why, you know, I'm coaching till this day, but it's two night and day. I mean, Coach Cream was, you know, he was going to get in your face, you know, and he demanded a lot out of you. And um, and I enjoyed it. And he's, he's one of the greatest coaches out there, you know, it's a Hall of Fame coach. His resume, you know, speaks for itself. Yeah. Now, if you were – I don't know if you've got any assistant coach offers or anything from D1 colleges, but if you were to get that, would you give up the TBT to take those assistant coach offers? <laughs> Man, that's a, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, I think, um, you know, I would definitely consider that. I mean, I enjoy um, coaching the TBT group, obviously, because, you know, we get to come back you know, to Wichita and, and compete and with the old guys. And, and I play with guys like PJ and, and JT. Um, but I definitely would consider <laughs> leaving the TBT, you know, for a, for a coaching job for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one last question before we let it go. Isaac Brown, the job he's done at Wichita State this year and then yeah. got the job this week. How does yeah. it feel as a fellow African-American yeah. To have Isaac as the first. I didn't realize he was the first African-American in the state of Kansas D1. Correct. I knew he was Correct. the first at Wichita State, but I didn't know he was the first of all three colleges. I mean, Correct. how did that make you guys feel knowing that – I don't know if you ever – I don't think he was an assistant coach at Wichita State when you were there, but, I mean, how does that make you guys feel? I mean, this guy is just – he's done a hell yeah. of a job at Wichita State. It, 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 I, I'm very proud, you know, and – you know, that's another topic for me. We could be here all day and maybe you got to get me on the show to discuss the topic of African-American coaches um, in, in college sports, but professional sports as well. You know, we're the minority, we're the majority of players, but the minority in coaches. And just to see him have that opportunity and the success that he's had this year, you know, I'm extremely proud. I'm extremely happy for him. I've got a chance, obviously, to get to know him. Um, you know, the times that I've kind of came back, I mean, he's just one of the, you know, the most humble, you know, great people. And, you know, he's so deserving and, and I'm very happy for him. Absolutely. Uh, Aaron, I know you got another Zoom meeting, so I'll let you get your break in before you have to go. And no I just want to thank you again for coming on and talking with us about the aftershocks. We're ready for July to be here so we can watch Absolutely. some more basketball after this season's over. So, Absolutely. I appreciate you guys for having me on. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks for coming on. No problem. Thanks, guys. All right. K-Ron Bradley right there for us. That's going to do it for our show. Again, Wichita State defeated Tulane 78-70 last night. They will move on to Saturday against South Florida, have a chance to win the AAC. So we will have to see what happens there. Like our video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button right below the video there. It's not that hard to scroll down and click it. And comment if you have any comments. We will see you guys next time.